to do it. Would you like to do that? Would you like to make that consecration just now? If you would, raise up your hand to God and say, remember me, Brother Branham, as you pray. I want God to do it. God bless you. That's right. All right. He sees your hand. Our Heavenly Father, the humility, humbleness of believing you, how you reveal yourself in humility, how that we find out in these days and all days that the church will get itself in that condition. Then you'll stoop right down into the gutter from nowhere and pick up something, anoint it, send it out, and it'll be rejected. Then judge the world by it. God, we see today that for 50 years, the precious Holy Spirit, who the people has tried to accept through dogma, and yet you brought it out in its power and its manifestation, a poor, humble bunch of kicked out, despised people accepted it, believed it. You've magnified yourself in them, Lord. And now we see them in another generation trying to become grandchildren to God. Oh God, what a horrible thing. May men and women flee quickly to the humility of believing the gospel. Grant it, Lord. Many hands went up here tonight. Many men and women. And Lord God, I pray that you'll bless them. I pray that this very night will find the peace of God in each one of their hearts. That they'll be so filled with your spirit. That they'll have faith to perform miracles. Faith to live a godly life. To live a life so sweet that when they are spoke evil of, they speak not back evil. Uh, that they can return a kiss for a slap. That they can return good for evil. Grant it, Lord. Make man to be humble. Make man to come to know you in the power of your resurrection. May your death not be in vain to us in this generation. We pray now that you'll raise up your church, Lord, glorified and magnified, sent it home to glory. We believe these things, Father. Make many here tonight who seek God to find him in this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name. And while we have our heads bowed, I wonder now if you would want to make another step towards that. If you would like to stand up and say, I'm not ashamed, though I belong to church. I'm Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostal, or whatever you may be. I'm not ashamed. I realize that I have trusted a whole lot in what I know, but never have I got to a place where I could fully believe the full gospel and to make it work in my life. I've seen things. I believe their promises. I want to believe it, but he told me if I did believe it, this would work. So there's something wrong with me. It don't work. I've tried to make it work, but it don't do it. And I'm ashamed of it. And I want the world to know. I want the people here to know that I'm sincere and I want it in my life. I want to be a true witness for Christ with a full gospel manifesting itself right in my life. Will you stand to your feet and say, I want to be a witness that I'm seeking God. God bless you. That's right. See, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Now, as these people, it's Pentecostal or Methodist or Baptist, has these true things, have you crossed that chasm until you know positive that you're standing in the presence of God, a redeemed son and daughter of God? And the signs and wonders, not a make-believe, but the genuine article of God, the Holy Spirit burns within you. And what you say to this mountain, it moves. You believe that? If it doesn't, now's your time. How do you know that it's my... You said, well, I stood before it. Well, if you're really hungry for God, you'll keep on standing until it comes. There's no end to it. You're persistent. Like the Syrophy open woman. She couldn't take no. She wanted it, really. Are you ready to stand anymore before we pray? That beautiful song, He was nailed to the cross for me. On the cross crucified. There He died for me. I want it, Brother Branham. I want it, God. I really want it. My life, I want it changed. I've, I've lived a guess so. I've lived a hope so. I want something. I, I want it. If those apostles could hit the zero mark every time, so can I. That's what I say. If it worked for the apostles, it works now. If it wants to happen, it happens again. If he is ever God, he's still God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's my campaign theme. If your denomination don't believe in it, let your denomination believe what they want to. You believe the Bible. You believe it. Will you stand? About eight or ten more stood up to him. God bless you. God bless you. More standing. More standing. 
I really sincere, Brother Branham. I want it. Something happened the other day. You read the, or heard the tape, The Seven Thunders. What time is it, sir? It happened the other day. You know these things. The time is at hand, church. The time is at hand. Don't, don't, don't wait any longer. See, how do you know the rapture is not going on all the time? First thing you know, it'll be past. One disappearing here and there. It'll be gone the first thing you know, and you'll, judgment will strike the world. You say, well, I, I thought this was too late now. You remember, they didn't know it until the day they entered into the ark, and then it was too late. The foolish virgin didn't know until she come back and found the wise virgin gone. Then she was left for the tribulation period. No good teacher believes that the church, the bride, the church goes through the tribulation, but not the bride. The church goes through for purification, sure, on the sixth evil. Right? Israel does the same thing for the 144,000, but not the bride. There's, the bride's forgiven. She goes straight to glory in the rapture. That's right. She's, in my opinion, the last member will be caught up one of these days. It might come and you would know nothing about it. Remember, it's a secret, secret catching away. It'll come an hour that you think not. You won't know nothing about it. She'll be gone. Be too late then. You say, I wish I would have stood. If you ever intended to make a stand, let this meeting in Albuquerque, let this be the time that you made the stand. Now, if you really feel secured by Christ, you feel that you have got the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ, all the signs and promises is at your command. And you see them manifested and working in your life, and you know they're true. If you sit there like that and you believe it, I'll take your word for it. That's up to you. If you don't, you should be on your feet. But if you believe that and know that those signs and wonders that Jesus, the vindication of the Messiah, speaks to you. If it isn't, then you should be on your feet. God bless you. I'm a stranger to many of you. Many of you has regarded me to be a seer. I've said nothing about that. You know that. I've kept that's not the hour yet. But you believe me now. You believe me as God's servant. Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what come to pass? If it's so, say amen. It's never failed by the thousands of things. Never one time but what it's been true. You know that the world around. Though you disagree with me, many in theology, and I'm not a theologian. I only speak what I hear. And then when I hear it, I look at the Bible. If it ain't according to the Bible, I wouldn't receive it. But not one time has it ever been contrary to the word, but with the word. That's the reason it's confirmed. God vindicates. Now, you hear me then. If you believe me to be a, a messenger sent from Christ to you, you believe me. If you're not in the kingdom of God, you better press right quick. It will not get better. It will grow worse all the time. I just mark that down. Just remember, see whether that's right or wrong. You see if it's going to be right or wrong. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. It's going to get harder all the time. The revival is gone. You're only gleaning in the fields. She's over. Now you say, I disagree with that. Fine. It's okay. If you do, that's all right. That's my conviction. That's my hearing from heaven. I believe the Lady of Sin age is the Pentecostal age where she comes to the place of lukewarm. And God spews her from his mouth. And that's where she's come right now. The Pentecostal movement has come to that place. Lukewarm. Not red hot. Not ice cold. You're not cold in Farmer. Neither are you hot. You're in a spewing stage, and you're going. Jesus, the only age, he stood on the outside of the church. Their dogmas had put him out, knocking, trying to get back in the door. Lo, I stand at the door and knock, if any man will hear my voice. I'm glad you've heard tonight. Now, I can only ask you to stand. He's looking at you. Jesus said that wherever two or three are assembled in my name, there I am in the midst of them. If that isn't so, there's no God. There's no Bible. There's no sunrise. There's no sunset. There's no flowers, there's no trees. You're really not here. You're in a dream. Life is not real. You're not a human being. So it's impossible for that to be. So it's impossible for him not to be here. And if you'll ask anything in my name, faith believing, he'll grant it to you. Now that's you now. You stood for a witness that you wanted. 
Now, in your own way, the way that you pray, the way that you want to, I want you to say, Lord God, in your heart. Now, don't pay any attention. The, the, the campaign here will give you plenty of time for this. All the time you want. Now, in your own way, in your own way. Now, I know it's customary that one man stands, the other and stands, the other and kneels down this way. But whatever way you want to, I don't care what it is. Don't say, Lord, let me do this, let me do that. Just say, Lord, fill me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I'm sincere in this. I mean it. Now, if you do mean it, it's got to come. It's impossible for it not. He promised it. And he's trying to press into your heart. The only thing, you just open a little bit and say, come on the inside and stand here, but don't go around and fool my private life. See? He wants you. He wants all you are. He wants every compartment in your heart. He wants your private life. He wants all your life. He wants to be your Lord, Lord's ownership. He wants to own you so he can guide you, direct you, take you, use you. Are you willing to do that? If you are, he's wanting to come in or you wouldn't be standing there. See? So now is the hour for you to receive it. Now it's up to you. Now, if you will believe with all your heart, it'll be settled from right now. This will be a memorial night. They probably won't close these doors tonight. You'll stay all night in here. But if you do like this, say, Lord, I'm standing on my feet. Until you fill me according to your promise, I'll never move from where I'm standing. You mean business with God, he'll get to business with you. But until you do, you're hammered. Lord, will you give me the Holy Ghost tonight? I don't feel nothing. Well, maybe I'll try tomorrow night. You're not going to get anything from God like that. You've got to come desperate, dying. Then you get it. Right. He promised it. If it isn't, what are you using your time for? If that promise is not true, that's how these things happen. That's why I can stand and say to the world, has the word ever failed? God promised me back there as a kid. That's the reason to say, aren't you afraid of failing? I'm never, I'm always a failure. He never does. I don't speak my words, I speak his. That's the reason they're always right. See? That's the reason I asked the world, show me one time it didn't come to pass. Show me one time of the thousands of things that he said, not one time did it fail. And it never will. Because it's God, not man. So God is here now. Christ is in our midst. He's willing to give you the Holy Ghost if you're willing to accept it. Not pay the price. The price is already paid. The price was paid this, paid this afternoon 1900 years ago. If you're willing to accept it. If you are, let your heart go now. Open it up. Take out all fear, all doubt. Raise up your hands to God. And say, Lord God, here I am. I stand here. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for you. You pray too. Lord Jesus, in the way of humility, in the way of humbleness, I offer you this congregation that's on their feet. I offer it to you because they have stood in response to the call. They're seeking deeper things. They're seeking more life. After hearing that the blood of Jesus so thoroughly cleanses that there's no more nothing, that the complete Word of God rests within them, that the very command of their own voice is creative power, because in them is the Holy Ghost. And this Holy Ghost is a creator. He makes things come to pass because He speaks the Word, and the Word spoken becomes God in action. And Lord, I pray that You'll send the Holy Ghost upon every one of them just now. And deliver unto them, Lord, in the power of the resurrection of Christ, the things that they are desiring in their heart. A better life. The baptism of the Spirit. Lord, may it be so that this audience will be illuminated. The hearts of the people will see the vision and be filled with the power of God. I command them to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I just keep your hands up. Keep your head free. Keep your heart filled. Just say, Lord, I believe you. Fill me, fill me, save me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me.
Bring your song leader here, not leave the song. Fall fresh on me, Holy Spirit. Just keep it up. Don't care. I'm going to stand right here, Lord. I'm on your hand. Like the unjust judge. I'm right here. Just stand there. I'm going to stand like a statue. I stand like a preacher did the other night on the roof. I'm standing here, Lord. I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care my pastor here. I don't care who it is. I'm here. I'm looking for something. I want something to happen to me. You promised it. I'm here to receive it. If it'll work for others, it's going to work for me. I'm here to receive it. I'm not going to sit down. I'm determined.
Don't try. Stay right with it. Stay right with it. Just stay right there. You haven't been standing there five minutes yet. Stay right there. You promised it, God. I'm here to receive it. All right, there it is. Reach right out. Say, I'll receive it. Here it is, Lord. I want it. I, I stood up here. I'm sincere. I mean it. You promised it to me. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Just Hallelujah. keep believing. Keep believing. You said you believe me. The Holy Spirit, that light, just keeps moving around over the building. What is it? It's hunting somebody that will open up. I'll tell the truth. God raised up your hands and praised him, saying, Lord, I thank you. You give me the promise. I'm going to hold you to the promise. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, I'm looking right at it. Praise the Lord. Stay right with it. Stay there, Lord. I'm going to stay right here. I don't care if it's in the morning. I'll be standing right here praising you. I know you're going to send it. Uh, this convention's ending tonight, and I'm here without the Holy Ghost. I'm going away from here filled with the Holy Ghost. So help me, you promised it. I'll stay like a weather vane. I'll do anything you want me to do. Only I want the Holy Ghost. And I'm determined to get it. When you surrender fully, he'll come in fully. But until you surrender, he can't come in fully. Surrender. Surrender your thoughts. Surrender your thinking. Surrender your life. Surrender your all. Surrender your prestige. Surrender everything to him now, and he'll come in and fill you with the Holy Ghost. That's what he's sure to do. He's already struck two or three here in the building. It's more than that wanting the Holy Ghost. Just keep believing.
I just showed Brother Demon the angel of the Lord pass over. I said, watch that woman. When it passed over, she raised her hands like that. We just showed Brother Demon to see it. But she went past just now to a woman right here. I said, Brother Demon, can't you see it? Just moving right around through the building. I said, watch it as it passed here. And the little lady threw her hands up. It's a little lady standing with a checkered like thing on. Something just struck her a few minutes ago and she raised her hands up. That right lady? Just sit right here with your hands up here behind the lady with the blue dress on. There you go. See? Your wife got away. I, I'm looking right at it. Now, if I've ever told you anything wrong, tell me when. It's here. Friends, you, you've got to get away from that starchy Pentecostal way. You've got to really die. You've got to really mean it. You, you've got something, you've got a partial hunger, but not a real hunger. You've got to make it genuine. Wow, Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them and heard. Try closing your eyes and bowing your head. Think it over. Is there something wrong? Lord, take away my unbelief. Now here with marble eyes, the angel of the Lord, whose picture is among us, been taken by scientific proof, the same pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel. That was Jesus. When he had died, buried, ascended back to God, Saul on his road to Damascus was struck down with that same pillar of light. He said, Lord, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. Jesus said, I come from God and went to God. Here he is today, the same Jesus, seen among us with eyes, caught by a camera, manifested in the Spirit. Oh, brother, sister, what more can God do? The hour of grace. I want to believe you're sincere. I believe you are, but you close yourself up. You're not sincere enough to receive it. Uh, so help me. It's right here in the middle. Uh, lie not. you're quieting yourself just a moment has anybody in here felt they re and did receive the Holy Spirit wave, wave your hand back and forth I see it all around over the people bless bless God let bless amen two that's three all right four all right there's four received the Holy Ghost during that shower four people received the Holy Spirit during that time praise, praise the Lord see, uh, just a few moments ago it was traveling a light Come from over this way, come back this way, went over here and come back again. I said to Brother Shakir, come here, come here. Here, see, come right here. I watch it as it passes over. There's a little lady there. It just as I said, it's right over that little lady. And about that time, she threw her hands up and began screaming. There it was. See, just passed right over, went right over in that corner, come right back around this way. I don't see it now. See, that's actually the truth. I'll tell you the truth. See, and here it is. See, four received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want it, it's yours. It's yours if you're willing to just open up. Now, you, you have a, a, a conception of what you should do. You have kind of an idea. Well, now, if I stand up here, this, no, no, that, that doesn't, you can sit down. Don't make any difference where you're at, but where you will open yourself up. And then the Holy Spirit will strike. Then, well, sometimes it begins to anoint you, and you won't just lead on through with it. You, you get a little scared. You're afraid. You pull back. You surrender yourself. Surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of fanaticism. If it is the devil acting, don't you think we know it? <laughs> yes, sir. He won't come around. Don't you worry that. Uh, he won't bother. <laughs> you just surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. When you feel that glorious, like this little minister said he did that nice stand up or something warm come over him. If he just knowed how to surrender himself right then, that's all. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. I accept you. Then something will start taking place. See? Meet it from your heart. Then it takes place. Oh, do you love him? God be with you. God help you. I want you. How many more in here wants the Holy Ghost? Let's see your hand. One, two, three, four. Oh my, my. No need to go in without it. 
He's eight of ten here, eleven, about eleven, twelve maybe. In here needs the Holy Ghost yet. I know we may be running a little late, maybe nine thirty or something like that. But we got we got plenty of time. We just got plenty of time. We want you saved, friend. We want you filled. Remember, you are you are saved. Of course, when you accept Christ, you're saved. But you're not converted until you receive the Holy Ghost. Now you know that. That's right. Jesus told Peter the night of the betrayal, he is already saved. So now, after you are converted, strengthen your brother. That's right. Well, sure. You accept the Christ as your Savior. But when you're converted, it's when you're really changed. That's right. And he wasn't changed yet. He cursed before the Lord and denied him and everything. But after his conversion, after thou art converted, strengthen your brother. That's right. Is that right? That's what the scripture says anyhow. <laughs> that makes it right. Jesus told Peter that had followed him and cast out devils and done miracles and everything. He said, you're not converted yet. But after you're converted, then strengthen your brethren. Right? It's true. Now, why don't you, why, how could you turn down such a, uh, an invitation as that? It's for you. I don't want to see you leave here without it, brother. We may never have another convention. We don't know. We don't know what lays ahead. We might not never have another. If you want to sit down and pray a little while, it's up to you. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. If you want to sit down, you want to remain standing, we're going to pray again. Do everything you want to do, but I want you to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, it's for you. Why would four receive it right here and the rest of you not? See? You just got to humble yourself, open up your heart, and, and really believe it. I may not be a good instructor in this. My ministry is praying for the sick. Where is there a Pentecostal preacher here? Somebody, a Pentecostal preacher, raise up your hand. What about this fellow here prayed for the sick? One over here. Come here. 